Hey folks, and welcome to the Pipnotic Symposium for the 1st of December, 2022. The 1st of December. Happy 1st of December, everyone. That's amazing. Uh, my youngest son was super, super excited this morning. He got up at uh, about just after 5 o'clock because um, in Denmark we have some super um, beautiful traditions uh, for Christmas on the 1st of December, and so we had everything set up uh, here. And, um, and he simply couldn't wait, so he had us all out of bed at about just over five. So that was a lot of fun. Anyway, but today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, trading for a change. You know, we rarely talk about trading. But we're going to talk about um, something that I really want to bring everyone's attention to because it is paramount to successful trading, um, at least relative to the model that we use, so the supply and demand, um, but also... Um, how this can be applied on the small time frames. Okay, and so via a lot of the feedback that I received um, from many, many people, and I'm so grateful for, for all of the messages and feedback that I received from everyone. It's, uh, it really means a lot to me, and I got some really good stuff. And, um, and first of all, I'd like to apologize for, um, for a lot of the mistakes that I've been making. One of them was that uh, the onboarding process was super confusing, um, and I didn't realize that, you know. And the reason I didn't is because, you know, you make this software, it's, it, it seems pretty intuitive to me how to use it, but it's not the case for everyone. And so I really apologize for, for the confusion that many of you have experienced when you just sign up for the Pipmodic for the first time and then you're just getting involved with it. Um, but I promise to make that better and I'm working uh, very hard on getting that done now. Um, among many, many other things that I will also do. Um, I've also added... Um, a new page to the website, or rather an addition to an existing page. So if we go to that quickly, you simply go to trading software, you go to supply and demand. Supply and demand is the only one I've done just yet. I'll, I'll walk through the rest of this, but for the time being, supply and demand is the only one that's done. So you go onto this website, onto this web page, and you scroll down and we have all the information about it and the facts and whatnot, but here we have supply and demand settings. And here I have a list of all of the settings, every single one of them. Uh, and an explanation. So we have the first one, the current version is 1.734. I think there's a lot of um, confusion about what the latest version is, but the latest version is that, okay? So if you're running 1.734, then you're on, on top of things. If you're running 1.73 or 1.699 or whatever, then it's an older version, of course. Okay, and then I have all of the other settings um, that we all know from the software. We have the keys. This is a section that contains product and private keys. I'll explain a little bit about each one. Okay, then you can kind of just go through those one at a time. And if you want to, if you want to search for something, you can go, for example, Max. Here, then you can find all the settings that have Max in the name, like Max Distribution. What does that mean? Um, we have Risk. What does What does Risk mean? Okay, and so all of this stuff here. So I hope this uh, this helps add. And I'm going to build this out. And so if you guys get a moment, I mean, have a look at this page. And if there's stuff that's still not clear, let me know, and I'll. And I'd, I'd really be appreciative of any feedback that you have because I just want to make this, um, this whole experience uh, super, super clear, okay? All right, so let's get now to the charts. Okay, so one thing that I have uh, mentioned before, I'm just going to show you actually what I mean by that. Memberships, premium, dashboards, supply and demand dashboard. There's a setting in here that I've mentioned several times, but I want I really want you guys to understand how important this is. And that's this one here, the age. Okay, this is super, super important. Okay, and so what I have started to do with my trading as an experiment, just to test it, is that <clears throat> I get my two chart configuration. I have supply and demand, currency strength here, and I have um, just this blank chart here and then I have this the buy and sell zones robot you don't need that but if you go whoever has it you can do use this configuration and then I have the histogram down here but what I'm doing is I'm leaving it on this so I can't see more than I don't know 50 bars or something because I mean looking at this you can see what direction the market is moving in okay you can see that it's it's moving down or it's moving up and if, you, if there's a little bit of doubt you can just kind of click okay so we're we are gradually uh, wriggling lower from here and so the best thing to do would be to sell okay the best thing to do would be to sell um, not buy 
uh, it doesn't mean that you can't buy because I'm going to try and buy here because I just like this departure. But generally speaking, you want to trade in line with that. Okay, let's look at this one here. What direction is this chart moving? It's moving higher. Okay, it's moving higher. So what does that mean? That means that you want to buy. You don't want to sell. You don't want to sell at the highs. You don't want to sell anywhere. You just want to buy and just really, really try to sit on your hands and force yourself to do that. If there's a lack of clarity regarding what direction that, that, that it's moving in, look at this. We have the we have the currency strength. We have the Australian dollar, which is here. We have the Canadian dollar, which is here. This Aussie dollar is stronger than the Canadian dollar. What do we do? We buy. We have a positive histogram. What do we do? We buy. Okay, don't trade counter what you can see in these settings here. Okay, if we have another example, Australian dollar, Swiss franc. This is also looking like it's moving higher. Let's have a look here. Hit load. You can see here that like, I mean, we're, we, are, we are bullish here. You can see here that we're, we're bullish. Okay, so we wanna stop, we wanna buy. And so where do you buy? Well, you look for areas of demand to buy. We can't see anyone here, but I bet you on the hourly, there's probably something that might take our fancy, maybe something down here. We'll probably have an even slightly clearer area that we can that we could look to buy at. Maybe even the half an hour chart. Here, we've got this lovely little pattern right there, okay? And so if you like that, and you click on it and you trade and you know that you're trading with the four hour flows. It's gonna change this so we have a slightly bigger stop. And I'm just gonna say, please take that trade for me because I think that's a nice pattern. Entry, stop, target, boom, okay? And <clears throat> this applies, of course, to every time frame. Um, as you may have noticed, I spend most of my time on the on the on the bigger time frames because I like to slow stuff down. I don't like to sit and stress on my telephone about a position that just got filled. Um, I like to gravitate to the uh, to the four hour, and I'm starting to ease into some hourly trades as well. But you can do this on absolutely any time frame, but you have to be mindful of what's going on on the bigger time frame. So, if the four hour chart or the daily chart, let's say the four hour chart is moving up and you don't really want to be selling on the five minute chart for that symbol. You want to continue to trade in line with those, with those major flows, okay? And so what you could do is you could have a two chart configuration where you had, for example, excuse me, where you had this, this would be the four hour. Let me change the signal charts. Turn that off. And this sync chart is available in the software's channel on Discord. Okay, so this is four hour, and now I want to be on, let's say, the 15 minute chart here. Okay, is this moving higher? Yep, you want to buy? Great, we'll buy there. We go here, we choose the next one. Okay, even though we're looking to sell here, it looks like that we're, we're, I mean, the most recent indication is the completion of a bear cycle. Okay, we completed it. Now we're starting to move higher. So buying here. So would you sell here? Maybe not a good idea. Because also you'd be selling into demand uh, just here. Okay, so you'd move on to the, something else. You go to this one here. This is just a real mess. So I wouldn't bother with doing anything there. This one here. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of moving away, which is great. We have, we have this area of demand here. Okay, and so take this trade here. Okay, know that you are, you can see that we have a completion of, of the bull cycle. We started the bear cycle, which was not a very a strong one. And now we're potentially starting to wriggle higher from here. Okay, so just keep these things in mind. Always try to focus on, on where the major flows are going. Okay, we'll try a couple more examples. The CAD Swiss franc. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna, we haven't taken any losses today, so I'm gonna take that trade. See if it'll. I would probably want to sell here. So I'll just flip that around and say I want you to start at nine bars, and then it'll move down to this one here. I didn't even find that one. 
gosh darn it, I better figure that out. Anyway, I want to buy down there if price gets down here, but this is a beautiful area. Also, I mean, we had this area here, I mean, price went up, it's kind of traded through that area. Um, but the robot was pretty interested on trading there, and you need the sample size, so I've got to take the trade. So, yeah, let's see if we get a wriggle high from here, but this is a much nicer area, and it has not yet been visited. So we could <clears throat> just take that. I'm just going to put that in manually. So that is 2.88 lots, 2.88 lots. Stop loss is, hmm, what is a stop loss? One three 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 seven. That's so strange. That number keeps popping up again. I see this number everywhere. One three three seven. It's very peculiar. Okay, this is a four-hour demand. It is a buy limit at one three three nine. One point three three nine. I'm going to whack that in there. We're going to let this. <clears throat> Where's the price going to go to? I don't know. Let's just shoot for these highs here and see how we do. All right. Good. We are going to leave it now for the time being. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. And once again, thank you so much for all the feedback I've received. I'm really, really grateful. And I'm working feverishly to get all of your, your recommendations and whatnot implemented, or the ones that I can do here and now. And then hopefully I'll have those done for you before long. Okay, so thanks again and have a lovely day.